Bob Jiffer is a partner in Sullivan and Cromwell's New York office with overall responsibility for the firm's litigation practice. He is a member of Sullivan and Cromwell's management committee and a co-editor, together with his partners Sergio Galvis and Werner Allers, of The Guide to Corporate Crisis Management, published by a Latin lawyer. In this podcast, Bob and Paul Holmes, the CEO of North American Operations at the global communications firm Finsbury, update listeners on communication strategies and best practices for corporations responding to the COVID-19 pandemic. So, Paul, how, how are you doing uh, navigating the quarantine? Um, well, um, surprisingly, Bob, it is not difficult to, to do what, not as difficult as I thought, to do what we do from home. The biggest challenge, of course, is how to communicate effectively for our clients in a situation that in many ways is unprecedented. And I would say that our clients uh, and we have sort of reached what somebody uh, on my team today called a steady state. I, I think it's been the same for Sullivan and Cromwell. You know, the first week or so, I think we were we were a little bit trying to get our, our feet uh, on the ground, but now it's been extremely seamless uh, and much better than I would have anticipated. I, I, and, you know, our businesses are, are the types of businesses where folks really can interact, you know, remotely quite well. So I suspect that when, when this is over, probably the best things of, the, of sort of the quarantine period will, will remain and then we'll go back to sort of more of the better things that people did before and a little bit more face-to-face and a little bit more travel, but maybe not quite as much. You know, when I look at this current situation in terms of our clients, it's different than uh, matters that we've worked on together. Um, you know, this is not the typical crisis where there's there's a long lead up to it and then suddenly the crisis happens. As You know, this is a situation where something came and, and overwhelmed, you know, essentially the world. And, you know, unlike, say, in a, even the Great Depression or in the financial crisis where there was a lead up to it, it happened in, you know, in a matter of weeks where the economy went from full speed to stop. And then, and then we sort of are starting to build our way out of it. But in terms of the issues that our clients are seeing, I think that in the typical crisis, you're sort of trying to deal with things that have happened in the past, whereas here it's much more of a real-time uh, management issue because you have to sort of navigate through the situation. So from the standpoint of just a, a law firm or a, a communications firm, it's, you know, do when do we go back to, you know, our offices and what are the risks of doing that right. under what circumstances? And then for a you know for a financial services company, it's how do you deal with the um, you know all the various you know governmental programs and interact with your clients. So it's it's really the decisions that people are making in real time that will be the ones that um, you know may get second guessed. Uh, yeah, and you know forward. one of the things that we've seen at Finsbury, Bob, from a from a communications perspective, and we've done research into this is that consumers and investors and other stakeholders want authenticity in the way that companies speak to them now uh, in a way that they didn't, they didn't expect to the same extent before. I think everybody expects that, or expected when, when the lockdowns began, that things would be bumpy and that platforms through which to communicate would get some getting used to. But what they won't put up with now or in the future, I don't think, is a lack of authenticity and a lack of concern for employees and their families in companies. And and really, you know, companies that have communicated their way forward best are, are, are the companies that have been genuine in their communications and have put the health and, and safety of their employee employee population front and center. 
Uh, and I think that's been a big feature of, of this crisis so far. Another thing I would say, and, and, and you referred to it, is that this is a pandemic and it is not a company specific crisis. So you have entire sectors of the economy that are affected by this uh, significantly and very often to the same degree. And the litigation risk that they face is sectoral rather than company specific in a lot of cases. Plus the issues that they're facing are issues that are not really arising because of anything that they did or didn't do. You know, right. in the lead up to the crisis, it's something that's happened. You know, the problem will be how they how they respond to the crisis. And so it's the communications, the legal strategy making that go on in real time that will affect whether you have a problem. So that, you know, if you have a if you have a customer, you know, if you have how do you deal with your customers in this circumstance? You see some situations where Customers are, are not being dealt with well, and then that creates a communications issue and potentially a legal issue. You have situations where there's a perception of folks trying to profit from the pandemic in some way, and then that becomes an issue. So it's a little bit different from, you know, again, something where crisis happens and you sort of have to dig your way out of it. Yeah, and, and I think, look, what we're seeing as well is that there, there is, as you know, there is a surge of, of plaintiff lawyer driven litigation that is emerging. But many, many of, of, of the plaintiffs in these putative class actions that, that, that are being pushed are, are customers and employees and, and audiences that companies need to keep on side. So that presents, I, I think, new and somewhat different challenges for, for companies in how they navigate that. Yeah, I mean, it's unclear what sort of you know, litigation will arise out of this crisis. There may, will be litigation where you know, companies try to get out of deals with other companies. There'll be situations where there's an attempt made to renegotiate a deal. There likely will be litigation uh, involving insurance companies and whether exclusions and policies for pandemics should be should or should not be enforced. And then, um, you know, there obviously will be litigation about treatment of customers, treatment of employees. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. I mean, one one thing we're seeing, uh, and I, I think it's a it's it's a noteworthy development, is that because this pandemic affects everyone and affects companies in, in certain sectors to similar extents. Uh, we're, we're seeing companies communicate much more through trade associations than was the case in the past. If you look at the insurance industry, uh, whereas, as you mentioned, Bob, there, there is you know, significant litigation getting going around business interruption coverage. Uh, it's really the trade associations in that sector that, that have led the charge in, in, in defending uh, the position uh, of, 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 of their members. And that, to some extent, shields companies, I think, from the sort of uh, difficult communications challenges that they face in, in defending their position while also doing their best not to alienate uh, or upset their, their customers. Uh, and I think that's true of, of, of many sectors. We're also seeing uh, a significant uptick in, in, in legislative efforts at state level to, um, to legislate either for or against uh, certain, certain uh, issues. For example, you know, the extent to which healthcare providers are potentially liable or not and, and that presents even, you know, that means there's even more need, I think, than, 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 than was the case previously for, for, for lawyers and, and communicators like us uh, to also make sure that that, that that working group within a company that is, is, is tackling a crisis has a strong government relations presence uh, at the table. You know, Paul, in terms of, you know, some best practices for companies as we, you know, move through this unprecedented situation, I would think the most important one is 
to reach out to your advisors early if you see a situation that you know might end up on the front page of the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times. I've always operated by the rule that if something is on the front page of the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times, then uh, the plaintiff's lawyers and the government regulators will see it and right. there will be inquiries started. So I think that's why it's so important that when companies are navigating these difficult issues or interacting with the government with respect to um, some of the, uh, the CARES programs, that they need to be extremely mindful of how it will be communicated to the press because then that will ultimately um, potentially generate the kinds of you know litigation matters that you and I have been working on through the years. Yeah, no, I think that's right, Bob. And I, I think companies need to be doubly sure that their, their, their communications are consistent uh, across the different audiences that they're speaking to. And I think they have to think extra hard as, as we're advising them to uh, about how, how they will be perceived uh, on the basis of, of, of what they say publicly. Uh, and that perception is, is going to be driven by much more in this situation than the matter at hand. It's going to be driven by how that company is perceived to be treating its employees, whether it's perceived to be going the extra mile to help its customers, and whether it's really speaking authentically and doing the right thing. Uh, and I think it is possible for companies to communicate uh, without falling into to litigation traps uh, that might uh, affect its uh, liability in the future. Uh, but to do that, as you say, it's really vital to bring its advisors uh, around the table, the virtual table these days, uh, sooner rather than later. All the research that we have done shows that that consumers and audiences say that they will remember whether a company stepped up during this crisis and they will, they will favor the companies that did and they will shun the companies that did not. Thank you for listening to SNC Critical Insights. For Bob Jiffer and Paul Holmes' earlier episode and for more information about our practice, please visit us on the web at www.solcrom.com. Thank you.